Monetization for this video has been turned off. There are no sponsors or ads, and I'm not making any sort of profit from this video. You'll see why soon, enjoy. In today's video, we're certainly gonna be checking out this $1,250 all black and no RGB gaming PC. We're gonna benchmark the heck out of it, but most importantly, we're gonna be reminded yet again that all black lives matter, and I wanna do my part and help spread the message. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. If you're not up to speed, I've been streaming over on twitch.tv slash Zach's Tech Turf every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you're following me over there. But yeah, today's video is obviously gonna be a little bit different than normal. And if you haven't already, I would highly recommend hitting that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's get into it. As you can see, the aesthetic goal of this project was to build a baller gaming PC that's completely blacked out in an effort to spread the Black Lives Matter message through my personal favorite form of creativity building gaming PCs. To be completely clear about my goal for this video, I know if I would have made a dedicated and more efficient video about Black Lives Matter that not a lot of people will watch it. I'm just a PC tech YouTuber, but so I figured the best way for me to go about this was to bring my message to something that I know a lot of you are going to watch, a video about an all black gaming PC. We'll indeed get to the parts list and benchmarks in just a second, but I want to quickly take the time to relay that change is needed in our country and we can no longer be passive. Unfortunately, through my lifetime, I've fallen into the trap of thinking that me not being racist was enough, but that's clearly just way too passive of an approach and that more active action is needed, and that's why I felt the need to make this video. We absolutely need to push for equality. This isn't a political issue, but it's a humanity issue, and I'm going to include a bunch of ways to help down in the description. I found this really great list on timeout.com with a list of ways that we can all help, donating to a cause of your choosing, showing up to a protest, signing a petition, using your vote, showing solidarity on social media, getting clued up about the anti-racist struggle, supporting black creators and business owners, and finally, equally as important, listening and learning. Head on down to the many links that I'll have in the description on ways to help. I'll be joining you down there. Hopefully no one conjures up anything negative about this video. Once again, I am not profiting from this video in any shape or form, and I just wanted to spread my message through the small platform that I do have. With the much more important stuff done, it's now definitely time to check out this all black gaming PC, and let's jump straight into the parts list with the CPU. This is actually my first new Intel CPU that I've used since my 8700K. This is the i5-10400. The 10400 is rocking six cores and 12 threads with a boost of up to 4.3 gigahertz, and I actually snagged it up for $182. Now the 10400 won't make sense in a lot of scenarios. There's certainly some competition with some Ryzen 5s at a much lower price tag, or even you can spend a couple extra dollars and get the 10600K, which is an unlock processor that you can overclock. But at the time of making this video, I could not find a Ryzen 5 paired with an ITX combo for less than the price that I paid for this combo. So yeah, that's why I went with this one today. Speaking of that ITX motherboard, this is the Asus ROG Strix H470 ITX, and this thing is an absolute beauty. There's no need to go with a Z motherboard with a 10400 because you can't overclock the CPU, so you could save a little bit money on that front. The Strix H470 is rocking every feature that I was personally looking for, which was an all black design, enough IO ports, built-in Wi-Fi with an actually impressive Wi-Fi antenna, and just like the normal ITX motherboard, it only included two RAM slots. That was certainly enough for this build as Corsair was kind enough to send out this 2x16 gigabyte kit of their Black Vengeance LPX series, which is clocked at 3,600 megahertz. Now the official max supported RAM speed of the 10400 is only 2666. You can't go any higher with a B or H motherboard like we have today. So just know that you don't need to spend the extra money on a 3,600 megahertz RAM kit like I did, or like at least how Corsair did. Sticking with the Corsair theme though, they also graciously sent over this 1TB MP510 NVMe SSD and this one is no stranger to the channel. Not only is it rocking an all black design, which doesn't really matter because it's underneath the shroud, but I thought it was still a good idea, but it's also rocking the super fast NVMe speeds of up to 3480 megabit per second over 3000 megabit per second read and write speeds. Moving on, we get to our graphics card and this here I actually paid for myself. This is the Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super Gaming OC3X 8G version and 
I felt like a 2060 Super was just such a good combination with the i5-10400. We'll see later how it paired in the benchmarking section of this video. Next up we get to the power supply and big thanks to NZXT for sending this one over. This is the C650 which I've actually never used before but I think I'm going to try to use it again in future videos. The C650 is a fully modular 80 plus gold certified unit with all black cables and it's ranked on the highest tier A list of that famous LTT PSU tier list which means it's perfectly safe and efficient. I do wish that they included a PCIe power cable option that only had a single 6 plus 2 connector. As you can see the only options were ones that have the double 6 plus 2 connector so you have to hide it with zip ties like I did if you're using a graphics card that only needs 6 or 8 pins. Speaking of NZXT they also graciously sent over this Z63 AIO water cooler. I desperately wanted to put this in this build guide because it would have looked awesome but if you were watching my Twitch live stream where I assembled this build you would know why I couldn't make that happen. The Z63 is only able to be mounted at the top of the PC inside this case which we'll talk about in just a second but once it was installed it sort of covered up like a third of the build such as the motherboard, RAM, and CPU and I just thought it looked too weird to continue using it. We actually debated about it on the live stream for like an hour if I should swap it out for a different CPU cooler. I was really hesitant because I wanted to use it so badly but I ended up swapping to something much more smaller and easier, the Hyper 212 Evo All Black Edition. This cooler only costs $39 new off Amazon, it's rocking four direct contact heat pipes with a 120 millimeter Silencio fan but honestly the most important factor is that it's all black. With the i5-10400 not being unlocked so you can't overclock it unless if you're using an ASRock motherboard with base frequency boost technology, the cooling doesn't matter a whole lot in my opinion and honestly this was just purely an aesthetic choice. I did also decide to add three all black 120 millimeter fans that I had laying around, two up front for the intake and one in the back for exhaust. The case actually did come with a single 140 millimeter fan for the rear but since it was white I decided to not use it for this build. Speaking of that case which was certainly another aesthetic choice, this is the beautiful Fantex Enthu Evolve ITX with the tempered glass side panel and I'm absolutely in love with how this thing looks. Big shout out to Fantex for sending this one out, it's rocking an all black design with a super aggressive looking front panel which is what I love, it's certainly a bigger ITX case so cable management was super easy and I really like the pull out top radiator mount that I at least tried to originally use with the Kraken Z63. The Evolve only costs $80 new off Amazon and it looks like it's always available which isn't something that we've been seeing lately with a lot of PC hardware. So that's what the final parts list is looking like, as you can see the total for everything is right around that $1250 mark, but just to reiterate two quick disclaimers, a lot of these choices were made for a sexy all black aesthetic so you could certainly get a higher price to performance ratio if you wanted to, and also some of these parts were sent to me from NZXT, Corsair, and Fantex. Links to all the parts in this build which are hopefully still in stock by the time you're watching this video are down in the description under the much more important Black Lives Matter information, but yeah, now it's time to see how this thing ran with the benchmarks. As always, let's start with Fortnite, and with our normal settings of 1080p and low, but with far view distance, we got a ridiculous average of 203 FPS, and those 0.1% lows would certainly be raised if I would have capped the frame rate at my monitor's refresh rate of 144. Next up was Rainbow Six Siege, and using the brand new benchmarking tool, which honestly kind of confused me for a bit, in 1080p and very high settings, we got another ridiculous number of 277 FPS. Following that was Forza Horizon 4, can't run MSI Afterburner on this one so I can only provide the FPS average, and in 1080p ultra settings with dynamic optimization turned off for testing, I got 131 FPS. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds followed, and in 1080p high, I got an average of right above our target 144 FPS mark at 145. Following that was Red Dead Redemption 2, let me know down in the comment section if you guys want to continue to see me use this for our benchmarking runs, and in 1080p with the highest settings possible, I got 57 FPS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone was up next. Yep, I actually tested this during a real Warzone match this time, and in 1080p high settings I got 117 frames per second and even managed to record a kill for this run. Monster Hunter World took the next spot, and this one is definitely straining on the CPU, but still in 1080p with the highest settings we got a solid 75 frames per second. Next up I tested Gears 5 with the built in benchmarking tool, although you're seeing some actual gameplay footage here, and in 1080p with ultra settings we got 89 FPS. Counter Strike Global Offensive tailed after that, and in 1080p with low settings I got 283 FPS, and here in the gameplay footage, I thought I was slaying people online but then I realized that over half the match was bots and not real players and that made me cry a little bit on the inside. And finally for the 10th game in this benchmarking run I tested out Borderlands 3, definitely enjoying this one and I'm consider streaming this one over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash zaxtechturf by the way, streaming every Tuesday and Thursday at 8pm Eastern time, but yeah here in 1080p and ultra settings I got 69 FPS. Well that wraps up our $1250 all black with no RGB gaming PC, once again please don't forget to visit the links down in the description about how you can help promote change in the world. I hope you enjoyed this video.